Okay, then this is our patch. <laughs> Hey everyone, Komodi here, back with another video. In this video, it's part two of looking at Minimal Audio's current. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be making a patch like I would normally do for my own music and my own library. I also wanna say thank you again to Minimal for sponsoring this video. I have been a big fan of Minimal software such as Riff. They reached out and wanted to collaborate on a video about Current and I've been wanting to check out Current for a while now. So I'm so happy to bring you this video. So if you like what you hear, go check out current and minimal audio software in the description of this video. Let's start with getting some sound going and I'm actually gonna start with the sub oscillator. The sub oscillator is actually one of my favorite parts about this uh, software because of the ability to play with the partials. And so what we're gonna do in this patch is we're gonna use a lot of random modulation. So I'm gonna use this LFO here and I'm gonna set it to randomize and I'm gonna have it just be a nice free slow rate and I'm gonna map that to here. If I want this to move in a bipolar direction, I can just hold Option Shift to click to change that or right click it to change it between unipolar and bipolar. Now let's play with these partials in an interesting way. Let's go through these different modes. I like that interplay between the even and odd harmonics, great. Now you also have the ability to detune the partials, so let's do that a little bit. And let's randomize this as well. So what I'm gonna do is I need now a new random modulator. So by holding Option and clicking and dragging, I'm gonna copy over and create a new version of this LFO. And I'm gonna map that to this modulation amount. Now the differences in this modulation really become apparent when we play with the width. So the width here affects the partials, so you can have a nice mono sub, but then the upper harmonics can be wide, which is a really nice character in sub bass. And another thing in here I really like is the knock. Now let's see if we want distortion as well. Maybe some random noise couldn't hurt. Let's add one more. I really love the sound of that. Now that we got our sub, let's add in a nice wave table. So I'm just gonna turn on this first one, drop it down to the octave range we're working in. And let's get some random action on the pitch scan here. And let's just have this layer come and go. Now, I always love to just test and see how the FM and AM react between the oscillators. Let's see how the sub affects our first oscillator. So let's see how FM affects our sub. Let's add a bit more movement in here as well. Now what's really cool too is, let's get a bit more tone in this sound. Actually, I wanna use the granular device for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna to go to this factory tonal section and I'm just gonna go through and find something that might fit our sound. Well, I like that. So let's try and have it match the sound a little more. So maybe let's have like a random band pass moving through it. Pretty nice, maybe in another octave lower. Now I'm finding this a bit punchy, so let's add an attack to this. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of our unused envelopes. And again, don't forget any modulator could technically be an envelope if we clicked. But anyways, I'm gonna add attack. And 
And if I want it to loop just the beginning of this sound, I'm gonna turn this speed value down to zero. Now it stays in one position, and as we scroll through this sound, us moving through the sound now is a little bit more matched. And let's try and get it to match things a little bit more, so let's get AM from the sub. FM from the sub doesn't even sound bad. So that added a really cool mid layer, and if it's too much, we can just head to our mixer. Let's just dial it back. Or even control it on a macro. Excellent, I think that sounds really good. Sometimes I like to use the MIDI to get a bit more randomness out of this too. So what we can do is we can turn the arpeggiator on. And what I like to do is get a little bit of randomness in the rate. Now where we get the randomness involved is if we turn this skip value up, it's not always gonna trigger the MIDI note. And we get these longer instances and these random gaps. I like to keep it pretty low, like 10%. You can occasionally add octaves in there too. Where that random arpeggiation comes in nicely is if we add some glide in there too, now our sound's gonna bend like crazy. Okay, let's start to play with our filter section. So in the filter section, we're gonna choose what's actually going through the filter. In this case, I actually want everything that we have on. And let's get a new LFO shape here to play around with the movement. So let's try something like one of the combs. And if you did what I just did and you accidentally add one of the wrong LFOs, you can right click it, remove that LFO, and now we can apply the appropriate one. I love the sound of this flange shift. And don't forget you can modulate modulators. So we could have an LFO modulate the rate of the modulator. Or we can even modulate mod depth. So another filter type I really like is the formant vowel full. There's something about this one that's just got such a nice vowel movement. Especially if you get it around the low mids. And then you morph it. Now I always like to test if series or parallel sounds better. In this case, series is nice, but maybe we can randomly modulate the mix on this filter. There we go. Okay, let's start to look at the effects. So usually one of the first effects I go to is either the fuse compressor to kind of squeeze in some of the work I did in the previous sections, or I jump to the polar distortion to kind of squish things together and add harmonics. There's even this amazing squash knob here and it, it goes kind of crazy. Now this tone section is really nice because you can tune the frequency of a resonance it can actually hit certain notes. And if we have the resonance go the opposite way, we take out and we kind of get a bit more of an off. And I 
always test this bass boost. Sometimes it sounds great. <laughs> Without even touching the two wave shapers, I'm already happy with it. So now as mentioned, I like to have a fuse compressor pretty early on. And this is when I really like to randomize this feature. I randomize the presets until I find something that works. I think this is the one. By tilting it, you, you can tilt the frequency offset to be more towards the lows or more towards the highs. So I find this one knob can almost fix any of the presets if you think it's close, just tonally it's a little off. One of my favorite features too is you have soft clippers throughout. So we can just continue to color our sound bit by bit throughout the process. So let's take a better look at some of the effects that I didn't look at in the last walkthrough. So one I really like is the ripple phaser. It's a, it's a phaser that's pretty easy to control but sounds really nice. So you have these notches. <laughs> And I find if we have too many, it just becomes a bit too kind of snaily, snotty music. But if we have just a few, it acts more like notch filters. And I'm gonna turn the mod depth down too, so we're not getting any movement. You have to set it to the middle here. You can have a tiny bit. So let's change the position. But we can also randomize this modulation position. Now I don't want such a big stereo offset. So I'm going to have that randomized. And I'm going to randomize the feedback to change how prominent that is. Now what I really like about it is there's other modes. So you have clean mode where you're not removing quite as much. And a disperser mode. And if you know and love disperser, then you'll like this sound too. And I'm gonna randomize this bend. You can kind of see it moving. And let's modulate the dry wet on this as well. Now the wave shifter is kind of cool because I really like this ring modulator. You can hear it move through our sound. Oof, and we're gonna go between those two. That's crazy. Another one I really like is cluster delay. The reason I like it is because we can high pass it. And we can morph between these highly resonant delays. Analog mode makes them a bit more like tape delay. And let's mix that with the original. Let's get Fuse Compressor to squish things all together. Let's get one last filter in there. And 
And don't forget we can keep the lows separated here. <laughs> And let's finish off by squishing it all together. the squash and the bass boost move in opposite. What the heck, one more compressor. Okay, then this is our patch. I could do this all day. So there we go. That is current 2.0, minimal audio. That's how I would approach a patch typically, just randomly going into it, tweaking things, exaggerating things. It's so easy to use, it's so well put together, but you can still get so creative and achieve endless results. And I didn't even talk about stream to acquire even more wavetables or presets or granular textures. So thank you so much Minimal Audio for sponsoring this video. You guys should go check out Current 2.0. I really love their software. This synth is no exception. Thank you for hanging around and watching. My name's Kermody. Peace.